G'day, I'm Hamish Blake, and over the last four seasons, hundreds of people have written in letters to Spicks and Specs asking a lot of questions. Well, tonight, because I've been on the show over 30 times and have answered up to seven questions correct, I've been picked as the person to take you behind the scenes of Spicks and Specs here at the ABC. Stick around because this should be very Specciting. I practice that. Here we go. Let's, let's get some access. Ah, ah. So we've made it inside the ABC, but this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Spicks and Specs Nerve Centre. Ha ha. Doesn't matter. We'll go and speak to Adam. He loves it. Uh, loves it when I drop by. I do it all the time. We're good mates. Quite a bit of a draft in here, actually. Sometimes that will happen. Well, obviously, one of the key questions that people have is um, your favourite moment. Most of them involve Frank Woodley. Favourite moment was when he was on the same show as Little Nell, and we asked him to recreate a scene of her on a TV show. She got up and started to swim and kept falling out of her bikini. And then Frank just took it to Frank World. It's not okay. It's not okay. Halfway through, I was looking at him going, Frank, something's popped out. And I'm going, oh my God, I can't believe he's actually fallen out on set of his bikini. And then I suddenly looked at him and went, oh, you're doing this on purpose. Do you have a favourite guest? As much as I'm a music lover, I'm a comedy nerd. So when someone like Weird Al Yankovic comes on, that that's that speaks to me right here. There was one point during the show where we got up and hugged. And I went, oh my god, I'm hugging Weird Al. This, this is my nerd moment. I'd written a, a parody to um, One Crowded Hour. And it was um, One Crowded Shower. It was about the water restrictions. See what I... It's yeah. very good. And I thought, I'm going to throw it at him. And I went, so uh, do many people write their own parodies and uh, give them to you? And he went, all the time. I'm so sick of that happening. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, try it. For one crowded shower, <laughs> there were five of us in the room. <laughs> we put a bucket down on the floor so the flowers outside could bloom. <laughs> it hasn't That's rained since nice. late December, it's now the middle of June. So for one crowded shower, there are five of us in the room. <laughs> One question we've got here from Marion Fremantle is how are guests actually selected to go on Spicks and Specs? It's a very delicate process, Mary, and Adam himself is in charge. Take a look. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we have one spot for tonight's please, please, show. Please, 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 Adam. Please, Adam. Sorry, Scotty, you've done a few this year. Christine, hello. Hi. Um, no. Leo. No, those shoes are too nice. You don't need the work. Rush, you're in. Oh, oh come on. Thanks, Adam. I've get... got family. Oh. Tell your story walking. Just get on the show. Unless you've got father. It's OK. This is exciting. We're just going to have a chat to Miff. She's in makeup at the moment, but uh, she'll love to have a chat with her. Oh, it's locked. Hang on a sec. Miffy, it's locked, mate. I can't. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, thanks, it was locked. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. they said it was OK. Who, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Has there been a defining moment for you where you've gone, this is a moment on television I never thought I'd get to encounter? There have been too many moments, I think, just sitting next to my 80s idols. Miff, your first concert that you ever went to, if I'm not mistaken, was Cold Chisel, is that right? No, no, it wasn't Cold Chisel. You're it was, mistaken. It was Jimmy Barnes <laughs> solo. You were, really? You were, it was back in the late 80s, I think. We took the bus all the way from Redcliffe, where I was where I grew up and um, took the bus to Adelaide, wow. went to Theverton Oval and, and your gig was the first real rock gig that I saw. Wow. And, that, and that, you've been playing hip-hop ever since. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had an 80s sort of childhood moment then. I really? Went, that's, that's like Brian Mannix and the Uncanny X-Men and then I went, I'm sitting next to him. <laughs> <laughs> 
good thing I'm wearing stretch denim. <laughs> Just even sitting next to me, it still freaks me out. Me aside, have you had crushes on guests? Sorry, Hamish, you're it. That's it. No yeah, other crushes. No, I just did suspect that would be the answer. Yeah. Had to ask, though. Yeah, yeah. What's been your worst moment? Oh, it has to be that time I forgot the name of the Nirvana song, Smells Like Teen okay. Spirit. You've only got a few seconds. I have to um, get the name of the song. I, I We're trying to think of, a, 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 of some, some way to give you a clue. It's not like up to the other team. Uh, <laughs> smells Like oh, Teen oh, Spirit. Oh, my yes, it is. Oh, yes. I was very new to this and I freaked out and I forgot something I really should have known and I've never lived it down. Miff's invented her own way of coming up with the answer to a question. Look at what's happened Someone. to me. I can't I just believe it. I'm the dancer. It takes me a long time to remember song titles and generally that means singing through the whole song before you get to the chorus where the title might be. <laughs> believe it or not. Believe it. Yes, it's believe it. Yes. Yeah. On the most recent Christmas show, she actually picked up a bottle of champagne off the desk and went for a wander. Because the only time she's ever sung that song is drunk, swigging from a bottle of wine. One of the questions I'm getting a lot, uh, though, Adam, is like, you know, how does Alan know all this stuff? Everyone sort of doesn't believe that he's that smart, but the answer is he's a genius, right? He's amazing. Yeah. He just sits in that seat every week. Yeah. He knows all the music knowledge there is. Because a lot of people think there's tricks or, like, a gimmick or something with his chair. No, no, but, no. Uh, do you mind if I check it out? Oh, you don't... No, you don't need to go around the back. Well, no, it's behind the scenes, so... No, I know, I mean, you've said... I promise people behind the scenes. In... No, if there's nothing to hide, there's nothing to hide. No, there's right? nothing to hide. I but just don't think you should necessarily... Who's that? Hamish, Artie. Artie, Hamish, look, Artie sits there for every show. He's on Google. <laughs> sorry, I didn't know Artie. I'm really sorry, Alan. Adam didn't want to show me in his defence. He's... I'm sorry about that, mate. Oh, I've, I've, sorry, I've got to do a thing. Yeah, no, it's sorry. So... <laughs> I'm not going to... It was mostly Adam. <laughs> See you later, mate. <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you so much, mate. Uh, this Hamish, is lovely. Hamish, uh, this is my seat. That's the guest chair. So, yeah, oh, off you. Annoying. No, no, no. sat down already. No, well, that's going to happen. Ow, oh, ow. Oh. This is a bit stiff, this one. Have you ever been in awe of a guest? Oh, all the time. Mm. Robert Forster from the Go Betweens. We're both massive Go Betweens fan, me and Alan. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what? You, you're going to win this. Because these guys are just really going. <laughs> <laughs> We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> you are worthy. Oh, Lloyd okay. Cole, who I'd been listening to since I was like 17 years old. When I meet someone like you, Lord, I want to say, I've been listening to you since I was 17 years old, and I just it, all your stuff is great. But I'm also aware of the fact that people probably do that all the time, and it probably gets quite boring. Never. Oh, does it? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well, that's good. That's given me permission to shine. Is there a rudest guest? Steve Lukather from Toto was extremely rude, which isn't what you'd expect. You wouldn't go, Toto, filthy. Not really. We were talking about toilets. How do you make that filthy? Also, how do you get to that on a music quiz show? True, true. There's not a lot of links. There's not a deal. <laughs> now, here's one thing I read, though, that the word Toto is actually the name of a Japanese toilet manufacturer. It is. And you know what? <laughs> Let me tell you something. These are the coolest toilets in the world. You don't even have to use your hands, man. You sit down in that thing, it <laughs> you out like an old... <laughs> and then blow dries your <laughs> hairs. And you're, and, you're, and you're solid at that point, you know what I mean? <laughs> Please tell me that's in their advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the spokesperson. <laughs> the dyed goatee was the thing that said to me, you're a hit with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you and George Clooney are best mates. Well, we're not best mates, but we've been friends for 20 years, you know. I used to try to get him laid. <laughs> He'll tell you. If ever I meet George Clooney, <laughs> that's the first question I'm going to ask. Him. Me, you know, you never Are you know. offering to break his drought? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's never had a drought, but back, back in the day, did when he we were struggle? Just... Was he? Did he battle? Well, not battle, but like you know. He wasn't he, as regular but, 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 as it before was he was now. really famous, is like he'd be like, you know, come on, look, get a play, place where we can get some girls over the table. <laughs> and, now he's, and, and now he's the sexiest man alive, yeah. twice. You know? All right, and you've just scribbled his number down there for me. Yeah. Here, here it is. See, see if you recognise oh, this. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of George Clooney. But he's not the filthiest person we've had on. Who is? Um, the blokes from Status Quo 
were on one night and I was sitting there with Michelle Laurie and we had one of the guys between us who was telling us about his boat and talking to Michelle and I about how he'd love us to come and visit his boat and come and come and sit on my boat when you come to when you come to Europe. That'd be great. Okay. And we're just agreeing, yeah, we'll sit on your boat, that'll be fine, that'll be fine. We're on a speedboat somewhere. You're always on about people in your boat. To an you? island. <laughs> Back to that again. Then on a boat and then and about the ten minutes again. later, we've worked out as the two band members are playing off each other, they live in a whole world of rhyming slang. So you've got to be very careful if I call you a bacter. Yeah, bacter. You don't want to be a bacter. <laughs> and boat is short for boat race, which is rhyming slang for neck brace. Yes. <laughs> Awkward. Filthiest, dirtiest old men of rock. <laughs> and of course, we loved it. What would you say is the hardest show that you've ever done? Oh, God. The hardest one would have to be when Darren Hinch took over yeah. from Hills Hill. Woodstock. Alan, shame, shame, shame. Awkward. Yeah. Awkward. Question Awkward. here from Denise. How do you get tickets to Speaks and Specs? I don't actually know the answer to that, Denise, just like a lot of questions on the show. So let's find some audience and ask them. How's it going? How'd, how'd you get tickets, mate? Uh, well, I actually thought I was coming to the uh, Einstein Factor, but it turns out... Oh, you know, <laughs> just that's down there. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. But we're going to Spickled Specs. Or... Yeah, you know, you'll love it. You'll have a great time. You'll have a great one. He loves it. <laughs> How'd you get tickets? Hi. Oh, we wanted to see the Einstein Factor. Yeah, Can it's we sold out. The... Oh. No, no, it's strictly oh, sold out. Oh. No, you'll love it, kids. Spicks and Specs, oh. yay! Who wants tickets to the Einstein Factor? Yeah! No, yeah. they're sold out. They're sold out. Oh. Keep walking. Oh. Spicks and Specs down the end. Free punch. You'll love it. God, millions tune in every week. <laughs> I can't get enough. Do you feel let down when sometimes people don't get a question right? No. Which Jimi Hendrix album cover originally featured a harem of naked ladies? <laughs> yes. Uh, Purple Eyes? No. Good. That's why. I You're the captain. You're the captain. You answer. <laughs> <laughs> don't speak. I'm sure I heard. <laughs> I've been on your team before and I've stuffed a few up. Do you ever go, come on, it was 12 all. No, no, but there is this, does seem to be this perception of the fact that I'm a bad loser. And I've never really thought I was a bad loser. I can't. It's the man who sold the world. Of course it sold the world. What an ass! <laughs> yes. Moon oh. River. No! Oh, oh. ass! Uh, <laughs> yes, that was it. It's he ain't heavy, he's my brother. Of course oh, it is. Please. Well, then why no. did you say that? I know. Why didn't I say the correct answer? Maybe I don't realise that I'm doing it. Maybe I am, in fact, a really bad loser. And maybe as soon as people don't get a question right, I, I feel like they've not only let me down, but themselves down and f are filled with a great bile and hatred for them. But I think there's something there. Rest assured that you've looked deep into my eyes sometime and seen hatred, haven't you? Or, no, it's never hatred. It's more disappointment. It is and disappointed. You... Yellow yes. submarine, I reckon, would be one of them. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, mate. I'm not the guy that stuffed up the first guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're going to be the guy who stuffs up... Stuffs up... Oh, f <laughs> <laughs> Well, he says a lot of anger when I talk to Alan. Yeah. He said he wasn't a bad loser, but he sensed maybe inside he knew he was. No. Do you think he's a bad loser? He's a good loser. He's a good loser. I'm the bad loser. I go home, I get in my car and I cry all the way home. No one knows this. <laughs> my favourite ultimate Alan moment, though, was when he sang Substitute using the Bible. There's been a lot of talk about this next song, maybe too much talk. <laughs> Who knew that could have gone wrong? The Lord <laughs> said to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel. His teammates didn't get the answer to a question. No, I feel that I failed. No, we failed. Of you. course you failed! <laughs> so he just threw the book on the ground. Oh shit, I threw the Bible on the ground. <laughs> and then, without a word of a lie, then sat down on his chair, which immediately broke. Oh! <laughs> No one's chair has ever broken on set. It was one of those things that I'm sure people watching would have gone, ah, they teed that up for a little bit of a joke. It was completely bona fide. Oh, man. That's, that's not good, that's is it? Like, that's no, I know what I have to do. And I'm sorry, Adam, but I know what I have to do now. I have to spend the entire rest of the show kneeling. <laughs> have you ever been sitting there and thinking, this could really go badly wrong? There was one episode, uh, a Christmas episode, and we'd come up with the idea of a game called Missile Toss, where you have to throw CDs down a chimney of a little house. Oh, 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 we have an elf down! We have an elf down! 
for some reason, we came up with the idea of having an elf standing next to the house. Yeah. Not thinking that flinging CDs at a human being <laughs> might hurt the Might elf. become painful. Good evening and welcome to We Really Should Have Thought That Through. <laughs> So, Adam, one of the letters that's come in, obviously, there's lots of games the show is famous for, but yep. were there some that never worked? Yeah, yeah, there was, um, what's the deaf guy singing? Yep. Bring in a deaf guy, make him sing something, try and that's work so out what he's funny. singing. Yeah, uh, the ABC said that was offensive. Ah, oh, squares. Um, so you think you can overdose? Again, I thought that would have been great, bad example for the kids. Oh. Um, and Simon says, we were going to get Simon Le Bon from Duran Duran. Oh, great, that's a great cat. Yeah, it would have been fantastic. He said no. Oh. What about Simon O'Donnell, the cricketer? We said no. Fair enough. Here are so, these are some of the props of games that still might get up. OK, yeah, I mean, what have we got? Simon and Garfunkel, guess who? <laughs> OK, great. That's great. Oh, can you we get, play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you oh, grab right. yours, I'll grab mine. So you've got to work out who, which, which person I've got up at the moment. Am I Simon? No. I think I know who it is. I'm starting to see why this game didn't work. But it's a good quick one. It's a nice one. You it's know, a great quick one. This I thought would have worked. Yep. It was play the records, work out what song's being played. <laughs> great. So, I'll give you a shot. That is great. Bat out of hell. No, Footloose. Like a bat out of hell, I'll be there. With footloose. Kick off the bat. Hard. That is a hard yeah, game. That's probably. That's quite this one. Look at this. This, this is one so, could still happen. This is amazing. This was this was me here. Yep. Spinning a record that powers revolving hands, bringing beers up to Brian Mannix's mouth. Okay. Yeah. Right. One of those is connected up to Tim Rogers from UMI on a plinth. Okay. So the idea is one of the hands would then upset his balance. He would fall onto Rhonda Birchmore's leg. Okay. Yep. That... Which would then kick over a pyramid of Australian singer-songwriters. Yep causing Missy Higgins to fall right. onto the gold albums of Air Supply, yeah. which would then release a piano, which would then... Oh, it's got you. It got me. That was the problem. Such a good game otherwise. I think so. I think it's almost there. Steve from Penrith wants to know, how much stuff actually doesn't make it to air? It's a good question, Steve. And in here is the edit suite. No way. OK, where we can see all the bits from Spicks and Specs that never saw the light of day until now. Miff Warhurst, come on down! Air guitar, but I used to play the flute badly at school, and it really annoys me when people play air flute the wrong way. Like when they do that instead of that, or they go the wrong side. That, that's, that's my little nerdy. I'm guessing pedantry. you check it out of the box, do you? <laughs> 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 Can yes. I just interrupt? Of course. This game never plays for anything, so I thought tonight that we could spice things up a little bit. I went to TAFE with John Paul Young's son, and for some reason he gave me this, which is a Sherbet Tour jacket. <gasps> oh, and that's fantastic. But how little, did John Paul Young get that? Um, it's, I, well, I don't know, but it's got a little tour stain at the front. I don't know what oh, that is. Oh, that's from Garth. And, oh. um, and it's got How's That oh, on the back. That's dope. So I reckon we play for that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Into everything, I'll have the answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hold that's that at awesome. the front? That's awesome. I most certainly will. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on Spicks oh, and Specs. Oh. That's a big stain. <laughs> yeah. Happy times. <laughs> oh, see, so I need the blue torch for that. Um, yeah. if, if you're really smart with science, you could have Daryl Braithwaite's child, Miff. <laughs> <laughs> Miff, Millsy, Reg, a first. Here is your first album. Oh. Oh, hang on. That went to the wrong team. I'm sorry. Can we go back? Sorry, that was my fault. I gave it to the wrong team. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not so much a lifestyle thing, more just an availability issue. <laughs> oh, look at you. Oh, you got you at campus Christmas, aren't you? Oh. Do you want some smelling salts? <laughs> something exploded in my mouth. I like... <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>
Oh. <laughs> That'll so be on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do a score check. At the end of that round, the scores are Miff, Kaz, Sean on five points. Catching up. Oh, please. Adam, we've got to thank the bean. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've done it, done it for you, Will. No worries. <laughs> In fact, I think there was one theory. Sorry. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> you just completely forgot we were on the television there, didn't you? <laughs> Who led all these people into my house? <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much just became married with children. Hey, Peg! <laughs> wow, you see, so few TV hosts put their hand down their pants <laughs> who don't work on the footy show. <laughs> Oh, and I've, I've, got, I've only got five interviews tomorrow. It's all right. And then Hamish and Andy in the afternoon. Oh, look at you all. Ooh, Hamish, he's so pretty. Oh, I like him with his fluffy hair and boyish face. And all that talent. He's going to look like me one day. <laughs> all right, this is Paul. He's editing an episode of Spicks and Specs. What's going on? Uh, you're in this episode. And Am I? You managed to get one of the answers wrong. I get one wrong. Yeah, do you want to have a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got shoes, they're made of plywood. Grease. No, no, I'm going to have to go to this side, I'm afraid. Oh, yes. You're the one that I want. Oh, yes, there it is. You're the one that I want. John Travolta and Libby Newton John. Yeah, Jeffrey Rush has embarrassed me a bit there, unfortunately. Actually, mate, let's turn this off for a sec. I did a bit of this at high school, I did media. So I might just um, stop that. Turn this off. You want to get a coffee? That's. Um, I'll just do a bit of this myself. Take two. Here we are, Paul. You're editing an episode of Specs and Specs. What's going on? Uh, you're in this episode. Am I? Oh God, I hope I get it right. Do you want to have a look? Yes, please. I got shoes. They're made of plywood. Grease. Good one. No, 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 I'm gonna have to go to this. Yes, yeah, maybe. Oh, bang. Yes. All right. I think that's great. Isn't it a bit obvious? No, that's fine. There you go, mate. Thanks for that. Good man. Really good work, mate. Good episode. Looks great. Well done. <laughs> Question that a few people would like to know. Who do you reckon's been the weirdest guest? Uh, that's easy. Um, Ari Up. Oh, yeah. um, who was in a punk band called The Slits in the late 70s. It's since that time that we've really wanted to come to Australia. Oh, we're finally here! <laughs> we're here! I actually must take responsibility for this because I believe that I suggested that Ariat would be a really good guest and I'd love to meet her. I never, ever thought that would happen. Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, when you hear first, I first heard that Slips, a friend of mine, had the first record and if I thought that one day I would be hugging her on the set of an Australian music <laughs> quiz show, people would have said, no, You're you won't. <laughs> <laughs> take that, like that, people who didn't believe in me! <laughs> now, I stand by that because it was good television in the same way that watching Elephant Stampede is good television. You know what I mean? Like you go, I'm so glad I'm not there, but look at the majesty. And a sailing has an I'm... ideal opportunity. <laughs> to she completely menaced Peter Hallier while he was trying to sing. I think I need, I think I need to sit back down behind a desk. <laughs> I don't reckon he's been danced against that much. You don't want to be treated like a pole. She was treating him like a pole, my friend. <laughs> Are you OK? Oh! <laughs> I haven't even done anything. Should I give you a Jamaican well, dance with it? Oh, please don't. <laughs> I don't think I can handle that right now. And then there were some kids playing recorders. I think they were playing the Jaws thing, and she was sneaking up on them. Difficult to sneak up when you've got dreadlocks and hot pants on. <laughs> Why sharks don't wear either of those things. <laughs> They've evolved. <laughs> they have. <laughs> They'll be early models. They had that. <laughs> Completely evolved. Can I just say, if we had had a seminal member of one of the first and foremost punk bands on the show and it hadn't gone bonkers, I'd have been sorely disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from, you know, getting to work with all these great people that you mentioned, Sasquire guys, Brian Mannix, me, all the names have been really off, has TV borne out any moments where you got to do things you never thought you'd do? 
I never thought I'd do the time walk. It's just a jump to the left. <laughs> and a step to the right. With not only Adam and Alan, but the guy who actually wrote a lot of the stuff. That was that was awesome. That was actually a great moment. Oh, let's do the time. And I also never thought I'd see Adam so intimately. And I was privy enough to be lying on the floor after we'd all died. hillsy has gone and whacked the leg up on the desk while he's wearing a pair of ladies' underwear. Good night, Australia. <laughs> I can't look at you! Yes. I know Adam a lot better now than I ever thought I would. Yeah, yeah. Never thought that would happen. <laughs> some of this, Alan, bro? <laughs> I was looking at that from under. OK, so it turns out I probably went into some areas that I shouldn't have uh, in the making of this program, and I have clashed heads with the ABC a little bit in that I'm not even on the property anymore, mate. At the end of the day, I hope we answered some of your questions. It has been a lot of fun. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia. We don't have any merchandising involved with Spicks and Specs, but yep. I've put my head to it and come up with a few things that we might be able to benefit from. This is the Sample Mania machine, right. where you just program in two seconds of your favourite songs. Yep. And then you flick through them and you try and work out what the songs are. Can you do that with, like, a, just an iPod or any CD player? This is the Whoa. musician or serial killer knife. Plays the song as you cut. Yeah. That's a great bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, then you put it oh. <laughs> so, I think that's going to be Times. really big. Thank God you're hearing this on Spicks and Specs. That might be from a different show. People will love that. That's the door. That's the Spicks and Specs door that you come in through. Here it is, people. Miff thinks. Can you buy that? Remember that amazing time when Miff couldn't quite get the answer? She's thinking, she's looking at the crowd, she's put her hands up to her head. And it's she's... signed as well. It's not actually signed by Miff. It's just, like I said, just relive those classic moments of Miff thinking. A, a great addition to any pool room.